Hey, good morning, everybody. Our reading today is from James chapter 5, and James starts out with some very stern words. Let's read the beginning of verse 1. He says, Look here, you rich people. Weep and groan with anguish because of all the terrible troubles ahead of you. Your wealth is rotting away, and your fine clothes are moth-eaten rags. Your gold and silver are corroded. The very wealth you are counting on will eat away your flesh like fire. This corroded treasure you have hoarded will testify against you on the day of judgment. For listen, hear the cries of the field workers whom you have cheated of their pay. The cries of those who harvested, who harvest your fields have reached the ears of the Lord of, Lord of heaven's armies. You have spent your years on earth in luxury, satisfying your every desire. You have fattened yourself for the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed innocent people who do not resist you. Wow, those are some harsh words. And let's give some context to what was going on. Apparently, there were some very rich landowners who were taking advantage, who were oppressing the uh, some of the people in these churches who were very pov- poverty-stricken. And uh, James is writing much like an Old Testament prophet would have would have written, and he's announcing judgment on them because of the, what they've what they've done. He said, "You better start weeping now because the t- misery is coming your way." Now, notice that he's not criticizing them for being rich. Now, it's that they're taking advantage of the poor just because they have the power to do so. The the, the playing field is not level. And they're hoarding what God has first given them instead of being generous. Jesus often said, riches are a test as to who our real master is. Now, the next set of verses, the second half of this passage, uh, James is now addressing fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, and specifically the ones who are being oppressed by these rich landowners. And he's urging them to to stay patient as they wait for the Lord's return. Let's pick up in verse 7. Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. You too must be patient. Take courage, for the coming of the Lord is near. Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. The day of the Lord is, of course, the day of of Jesus' return, and it's the time when James says that their suffering will be relieved and and ended, and in fact, all the injustices will be righted. Uh, This was uh, there was a real sense in which the people in the New Testament thought that Jesus was coming back any day. You notice that James said, "Take courage, Uh, the Lord is near." So there's some just some very pointed applications, I think, to these passages here. And in fact, the passage splits itself into two sections, and we can ask questions about either one. Where where do we find ourselves in these two sections? James is asking, first of all, about our attitude towards wealth. Remember how Jesus told us in Matthew 5, uh, he said, no one can serve two masters. You can't serve both God and money. Notice he didn't say it's hard to serve two masters. No, he said, you can't do it. It's impossible. Do you live with a generous attitude? Our generosity towards God and others is a strong indication about who we're serving. And if we're not generous, we lose out on a huge joy in life. Remember, God loves the world so much that he gave the greatest gift of all. He gave his son, and he calls us to be generous givers. It's the greatest joy that there is. So perhaps God is prompting us to trust God, uh, to trust him, uh, to share our extra with others who are in need. Now, in the second part, if we, we may uh, resonate better with those who are being oppressed in this second section. And J- James describes several examples of, of how even the prophets who were, who were God's spokespersons in the Old Testament endured much suffering, but yet God was faithful to them and God provided whatever they needed. He says, just like farmers, uh, wait for the rains in the spring and the fall. 
uh, they plant their crops and then they have to wait in faith for God to provide the rain. Uh, and so there's, there's, there's two messages here for us that are actually really the same. If we have enough, trust the Lord and give generously. And if we don't have enough, trust the Lord because he will provide. He is faithful. Either way, the message is trust the Lord. So I pray you have a great day. If these devotional videos are helpful to you, subscribe to our channel and click the notification button so you know when we post a new video. And of course, please share them with others.